Today, what we want to talk about is wildflowers and the ones that are going to start adding a bunch of color to your spring wildflower garden and bring in tons of pollinators. First up is going to be black eyed Susans. I love this plant. I actually didn't plant it this year. I planted it last year and it is gorgeous. Ever since it's been coming in, I just, ugh, I just been sitting here wanting more of it. This has been a favorite of a lot of different pollinators, mostly bees. I love how cheery happy it is. It kind of reminds me of my favorite native wildflower because it's just like it's doing that bobbing in the wind. Not quite as well as my favorite native plant, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. And it really got me thinking, I want to add way more of this to the phase two section. But if you're thinking about having a native wildflower that kind of stays in one location and is going to bring in like, bam, a lot of color, and you don't have to plant it every single year, right? Because it can be an investment to add plants back into our garden. What's really nice about Black Eyed Susans is you plant them once and then they come back the next year and then the next year. And when it comes to natives, they just tend to get better. This is already much fuller than it was at this time last year. So I am a big fan and I'm definitely gonna be adding more of it to the garden. The next wildflower that we should be considering is if you're looking for a ground cover that's gonna bring in bees that butterflies will enjoy and can help you keep out weeds, you should be considering dune sunflower. Dune sunflower is native. This version is native to the east coast of Florida. There are different types that are native throughout that are different, that's not the word, not varieties, different, um, they're actually different species. So you can find different ones that are a little bit taller, a little bit shorter. This is the east coast version and it does tend to stay on much shorter end and is a great ground cover. You can see there are some locations where I've stomped on it. So it can take a little bit of walking on though it's not the biggest of fans but like here you can see as I try to get to my tomatoes regularly I do step on this location and it isn't died off it's just still going and going which may provide some challenges for me but here's the thing is that dune sunflower this dune sunflower I have not replanted huh, years I planted this a couple years ago at least two years ago so it is another one that it may die back in the winter months but it will come back and it's going to bloom three quarters of the year and that's some of the plants that we're going to be talking about today these are some of the bloomers that are going to come and then come and then come and you're just like you know you just add them once 
and they're adding flowers. You're not going to get as much of like the density of flowers as like you would with a black eyed Susan, but black eyed Susans aren't going to necessarily keep that full flush of flowers the entire year. Doing some flower, it's going to, it's going to keep going all year. And just like all types of sunflowers, the little heads of the flowers do follow the sun throughout the day, which is super cute. And if you look at this one, you can definitely see some bee activity. They may be moving away because I'm right here and they try to stay away from me. They're good little bees. But this is a great pollinator source that's going to help you keep out weeds, keep the ground covered, and it's just like happy. It's like a happy little plant. Our next plant, oh, <laughs> coral honeysuckle is jumping on it. Uh, this is spiderwort. Spiderwort is a lovely, actually native edible. You can eat any part of the plant from down in the ground with the tuber system to the flowers. I know some people do them as candy flowers to the leaves can be added to your salad. This plant is one, has been actually blooming for the last month. Not well in my garden. Honestly, it's been looking really good in a lot of people's gardens since probably late February. But for me, I don't know why. Mine just has been chilling and hanging out not really blooming <laughs> even though and you might think like oh well people further north or further south than you no literally people who like live three doors down from me five doors down from me they have spider wart and like it's doing fine uh scientific name transdensia ohanus this is just like a really pretty plant you can use it it's kind of like it doesn't spread aggressively i think i put this back in mm, almost two and a half years ago and you can see, I actually have two of them here. They weren't really happy before with some of the other plants that I have, but now that I've put this trellis in to keep another native out of the way, which is goldenrod, um, this has had a better time with being able to get more sun. I think the challenge is, is this area is probably a little bit drier than it likes. They do tend to like more moist soil. And with the location I have it in, which is surrounded by cement and the closest sprinklers are over there, so they don't get a ton of water. It's probably not as happy as it could be and could be the reason why it's not blooming as much. But if you've got, this can also handle some shade. I have neighbors who have it under oak trees and large trees um, and they get semi shade and they do really well. And those are the ones that are actually blooming even better than mine. I'm actually heading to the backyard where I don't have a lot of native wildflowers, but this one, this one's bloomed almost the entirety of the year. I've held off on putting it on the list just because it hasn't been as vibrant. But for those of you, as we're heating up, nothing says heat and humidity like tropics and what's more tropical than tropical sage. This is a great wildflower to add to your garden. It comes actually naturally for our native versions in three different colors. So we have this gorgeous red. I like this one because it just says tropical to me. You can see it's just bursting forth. It is in the sage family, so it does have a sage-like smell. So if you're looking to add natural aromas to your garden, this would be an option. It also can come in white, and I mean it's white white. This is really pretty. I don't know how I got it. I know sometimes they can change color, or at least that's what I feel like I remember. If that's not right, someone correct me, but I don't have white. Well, I haven't had white in a long time. I did have some white on the Eastern side of my house, but it's been a good two years. So if I remember correctly, they can shift colors. That might not be right though. I don't know. Somehow I got white, who's, I'm not mad about it. Besides red and white, you can also get it in pink. This is not the pink that it comes in. It's actually, I would describe it more as a flamingo pink. It's really vibrant and pretty. And all three of these can be mixed together. They're gorgeous and they bloom almost the entire of the year, especially for Central and South Florida. The big watch out with this one is it recedes like a lot. Cause see, I didn't plant it here. Oh no, 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 no. See, I actually planted it all the way over here back in this semi-shade location. And this plant actually can take full sun and it can go into these shadier locations, which this doesn't get a ton of sun, which is why it's not blooming as much. But, but what you can see is it has spread all along here. Actually those, those, those. Oh wait, let's keep walking. Oh, look at all these little plants over here. Are those tropical sages? Yes, they are. Now let's keep going further. Oh, look, oh, look, there's more of it. So this plant for sure to say, I mean, it starts way back there and it has over the last couple of years has spread slowly down this way, but it will spread. It is a aggressive spreader. It's not invasive it's native but it can be an aggressive spreader so consider what areas you might want it in and what areas you might not want it in and then plant accordingly but it's a very straightforward easy wildflower to have and it's just going to add color and it's great for bees butterflies 
and hummingbirds. Next up, we need to talk about, ooh, look at how pretty this one is. Oh, it's so pretty. It's blanket flower, the Lardia Puccella. So, so pretty. Gorgeous to add to your garden, but here's the problem. This wildflower is no longer considered native to Florida. Ah, I know, right? It's gorgeous. It's a really prolific bloomer and it handles the heat of the summer and spring, you know, so you're gonna get blooms, but it is technically no longer native to Florida. This was only identified, I think about mm, a year and a half ago. So you'll still see it on people's lists and recommendations. It's not because people are trying to mislead you. The information's just not out there very much, but I did wanna bring it up because it is a good bloomer. It is something you should consider adding to your garden. Wildlife does really enjoy this. Um, I think it was Craig Hugel, who, if you don't know, is really big into doing research and work at the University of South Florida with native plants. He did point out the fact that, like, it doesn't change the fact that wildlife likes it. It is not an invasive species. It's just now technically considered a naturalized exotic species. So I did want to bring it up, though technically not native anymore, but one that you may want to consider adding, knowing now that it's not native. That's pretty. It doesn't change. I didn't know when I planted you that you weren't native, but now I know, but I'm not going to take you out. You can stay here because you are pretty and they like you. When it comes to blanket flower, it does really well for bees, butterflies, and you actually might get some hummingbird activity. Every now and then they get what's called like a, what's a double flower, where actually the petals split open on the side and allows for nectar sourcing for things like hummingbirds. So just fun fact for you. And if you're looking for plants that are going to attract bees and butterflies to your garden during the spring season, well, check out this video here. And if you want to continue learning about native wildflowers to Florida, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!